Hey everyone, it's Joe and Ryan, and today we're going to talk about the elements, one of the six main components of each zodiac sign from which we derive their meaning. So there are four elements, fire, earth, air, and water. And since there are 12 zodiac signs and four elements, math tells us that there are three zodiac signs of each element. We're going to talk about each element individually, but as we talk about these, you'll hear us mention something called qualities. You'll hear us use words like hot, cold, moist, and dry to describe the elements. These qualities are called the qualities, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? These four qualities come together in Paris to make the elements, and it's kind of its whole thing by itself. We do have a video on that, so look for the link to that in the description, but we just wanted to give you a heads up. If you're not familiar with these qualities, go check that out before you watch this video. So now we're gonna move on and talk about each of the elements and we're gonna start with the fire signs. So the three fire signs are Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. Fire signs are often characterized as being passionate, driven, a little competitive, sometimes aggressive, very energized, extroverted, etc. So you see the qualities of heat and dryness come through really clearly with fire signs. You have the heat half of fire signs, which is where you get words like passionate or energized or aggressive even. And then you have sort of the dry characteristics, which comes off as being like, this is where you get the idea of fire signs being less sociable, kind of set sometimes, apart or yeah. want to be kind of, um, where it, it's definitely where you get the idea of fire signs being competitive. This is where that is. Right, wanting to be the best. Yeah. Usually the best is separate from the rest, mm -hmm. and that's a Ooh. kind of a dry thing. <laughs> best separate from the rest. But, but yeah, on a t-shirt. But it's also where you get the ideas of like leadership and like leading something, you know, being at the front and leading. So one way I like to think about fire signs is to just think about literal fire itself. It's always moving, it's always rising higher, and it's just constantly in motion. This really speaks to the heat quality, the really active quality of fire, and you see this so strongly with Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. They're always on the move, they're always seeking something new, and they always kind of want to be the best and be at the forefront of something new, or that's kind of like a weird way to say that. Anyway, <laughs> literal fire is a thing. So next we have the Earth signs. These are Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. Earth signs are known for being grounded, down to earth, whoa um <laughs> concerned with more tangible things very sensible pragmatic more organized and also maybe a little more stubborn or uh slow to change or just a little more slow moving in general so the earth element is made from the qualities of coldness and dryness and the coldness comes out with the earth signs with their being more slow paced even more methodical in their approach to things and we also have more of a penchant towards like restraint than like, you know, the fire signs, which are very, you know, go and get it. Earth signs are maybe like, oh, let's think about this maybe. Mm -hmm. So the dry quality of earth comes out with earth signs being more practical, being more resistant, kind of the stubborn uh, keyword that Joe mentioned. That's a good one for dryness. Being more socially isolated. Like, you know, they're not, earth signs are not social butterflies at all. And it's not that earth signs are never social, but right. like compared to something like fire signs or air signs, Earth signs tend to be more reserved yeah. and just a little more kept to themselves, a little more calm and collected versus like... Kind of the home buddies. Yeah, some, yeah, totally. Dryness also lends itself to the uh, kind of stereotype of earth signs being more structured or rule-based. And this is where you get the idea of earth signs preferring things to kind of, you know, everything in its place and a place for everything. Like when you think about earth and you think about it literally, the easiest way to think about it is like dirt. You know, it's, it's not moving around by itself like the wind or like fire it's very stationary inert and it's like made up of little defined pieces little granules this really brings in the coldness and dryness of earth and you can see this come through in some qualities of the earth signs so next we have the air signs which are gemini libra and aquarius air signs are known for being social intellectual curious um, communicative talkative etc so the air element comes from the combination of heat and moisture and we talked a little bit about heat before with fire signs and it's the same with air signs too like heat is active and explorative and you really see this with air being more like seeking, like trying to find things, wanting to experience new things. Like travel is a good air word, like always mm -hmm. trying to go somewhere else and do something else. Um, but moisture is a quality that we haven't really talked about yet. And moisture is about uh, connection, 
like this is where air gets its social and talkative communicative streak from moisture wants to bring things together and interact with other things and one of the main ways that we interact with other people is by talking to them by sharing ideas with them another good way to think about air is to think about again air itself air is always moving and it's constantly passing over everything and touching a little bit of everything this really brings together the seeking quality of heat and the connective quality of moisture that you get in the air element and in the air signs. So next we have the water signs, which are Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. Water signs are known for being sensitive, emotional, sometimes moody or clingy, compassionate, empathetic, and creative. So the water element is made through the combination of the qualities coldness and moisture. And these are qualities that we've talked about a little bit before, so it should be kind of easy to see how they come together to uh, inform the attributes of water. So the first one, coldness, is more about passivity, introversion, introversion. <laughs> That's a way to pronounce that word. Isn't it? Yeah, I've heard it pronounced that way. Okay, cool. Introversion uh, with an S. Sounds very exotic. It does. So coldness is the passivity, the introversion, or the inertia um, that water signs are sort of more known for. They're more quiet, like they kind of keep to themselves. Uh, and then the moisture element is still that that seeking to connect um, and a lot of it with water since it is more cold the connection comes across as more feeling based or more understanding based sort of like uh, we would like somebody might say that there's like an unspoken bond and that's kind of like the water thing. A good way to think about it, especially compared to the moist quality of air, is like air people having a lot of friends and being friends with anyone and water people having like their friends that are close to yeah. them and like their little inner circle yeah, inner versus circles, wanting right. to go out and be friends with everybody. Mm -hmm. Both are connective, but one's connective in a hot way and yeah. one's connective in a cold way. Yeah. Moisture also comes across in water with like its empathy or compassion, its ability to understand and sort of put itself in the shoes of or in the or in the situation of another person, um, which is something that you're not going to get with like a dry element like earth who doesn't really care or doesn't have that ability that to readily access that sympathetic emotion. So thinking of water literally, um, water takes the shape of whatever container it's mm. in. This speaks to the coldness, the kind of condensing, settling nature of coldness. And that could be water taking the shape of like a basin or a cup or of a riverbed where it flows. So water is very flowing. It is very connective. It can take something like dry sand and make it into mud or something like that because of that connective quality of water itself so you see these qualities come through with the water signs themselves just like you see it with water literally water taking the shape of its container is also a really interesting um illustration of like the water signs abilities to understand or like be in the position of another like put themselves in the position yep. of another person yeah. So like we mentioned, there are three signs of each element, but while they share these kind of elemental qualities, they're not all the same. Mm -hmm. The way they express these elements differently depends on the other components that go into them. So modality, sign expression, planetary ruler. And as you start digging into these other components, you start to see how they layer on top of each other and how they can have some things in common, but express some things differently. So make sure you check out those other videos to see how each fire sign expresses the fire element in its own unique way, etc. So if you have any questions or comments about the elements of the zodiac signs, and what they mean or how we get the meaning from them, be sure to leave a question or comment in our comment section below and we'll do our best to get back to you. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. These qualities are called the qualities, wow. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> like, why? <laughs> okay. <laughs> These qualities are called the qualities, wow. <laughs> I got this, I got this, okay, okay. I believe in you. You're our only hope.